So finally, um, with this um, issue of trying to factor polynomials, we'll come to long division. Uh, so this is the most difficult of the various factoring techniques, um, or at least the most time consuming. It's also the most reliable. This is, you know, if there's a method that's going to work every time, it's going to be long division. It's always going to do the job, right? So here's a cubic polynomial that we might want to try to factor. Uh, you might say, hey, grouping is pretty easy. Let's see what we can get away with if we do, do grouping, right? But you'll notice right away that grouping is going to fail in this case. If I take out an x squared, um, well, I'm left with an x plus 8. Uh, over here, best I can do is a 3, right? I could factor out a 3, and um, I'd be left with 7x seven, seven plus 9. It's not going to work, right? Doesn't so, so grouping is not an option. So we're like, OK, that's out. What else are we going to try? Well, we can go to rational roots theorem, right? What are the possible factors here? We could try um, so possible integer roots. Well, the possible integer roots are going to be the numbers that divide evenly into 18. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 9, plus or minus 18. That's 12 possibilities. That's a lot, right? Um, so we hope we don't have to try all of them. Um, there are some methods to narrow down, like I mentioned, but we, we don't want to get into it. It takes us too far away from what we want to do. Um, we don't want to spend too long on pre-calc videos, right? We want to get into calculus. Um, so you start testing them out. Um, you can do a bit of trial and error if you like. You see what works. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can kind of guess. You can look at things and you can say, okay. Um, well, ones, you know, so none of the positive ones are going to work, right? Um, any of the positive roots, I've got plus, 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 right? Positive roots aren't going to work. So at least I can narrow down to the negative. And I say, okay, what about minus 1? I'd have minus 1 plus 8 minus 21 plus 18. So let's see. The two pluses, that's 26. The minuses, minus 22. No. Okay. Let's move on. Let's try minus 2. Let's see what happens with minus 2. P of minus 2 is going to be minus 8, right? 2 cubed is 8. Minus sign survives. 2 squared is 4 times 8 plus 32. Two time, 21 times 2 is, minus, is 42 with a minus sign. And then plus 18. So let's see. Minus 42 minus 8. Minus 50. 32 plus 18. Ah, plus 50. Excellent. We're in business, right? So the factor theorem now tells me that x minus minus 2, which is x plus 2, is a factor, right? And that means that I can write p of x as x plus 2 times some unknown polynomial q of x. And now I want to find q of x. So how do I find q of x? Well, I guess I could divide both sides by x plus 2, right? Then I'd have q of x. So to find q of x, I have to take p of x, my original polynomial, and I've got to divide by x plus 2. Here's where long division comes in. So here's what polynomial long division looks like. Out front, put your divisor. Okay. Now we write down the polynomial that we want to divide into. x cubed. 8x squared, 21x, plus 18. Okay. Now, the kind of main thing you got to remember when you're doing polynomial long division 
is that you always compare sort of the top powers. Oops. Okay. So in that case, at the first step, you're comparing the x cubed with the x. So you're always going to be comparing the x to sort of whatever the top power is. And you say, okay, what do I need to multiply this by to get that? That's the question that you're trying to answer. So we say, okay, x, I need to multiply by x squared to get x cubed, right? And now you take that x squared and you multiply by what you have out front. So x squared times x gives me x cubed. x squared times 2, 2x squared, okay? And you subtract, right? There's a 0x and a, and a 0 if you like. So we subtract x cubed minus x cubed. Those cancel. 8x squared minus 2x squared leaves me with 6x squared plus 21x plus 18. So now the top power that I have is 6x squared. And I say, what do I have to multiply x by to get 6x squared? Uh, well, I'll have to multiply by 6. That gives me 6x. But I also have to multiply by another x. Right? So x times 6x gives me 6x squared. So I need 6x. So now I take 6x, I multiply by x plus 2. So 6x times x gives me that 6x squared. 6x times 2, 12x. And again, I'm going to subtract. So I subtract. 6x squared minus 6x squared cancels, gives me 0, as I expect. 21x minus 12x, 21 minus 12 leaves me with 9x minus that 18. And so again, this is my top power, and I ask, what do I need to multiply x by to get 9x? Well, of course, I need to multiply by 9. So 9 times x plus 2, 9 times x gives me 9x. 9 times 2, oops, sorry, that's a plus 18. 9 times 2 gives me 18. And I'm subtracting. And luckily for me, remainder is 0 which is what I want, right? I know that this was a factor, so I knew it should divide evenly, right? Q of x should be a polynomial. I know it should divide evenly. So now I know that my P of x can be written as x plus 2 times x squared plus 6x plus 9. And you might ask if you can factor that quadratic. You can. In fact, uh, it's a perfect square. This is x plus 2 times x plus 3 squared. OK? And then you're done. All right. Uh, now, some of you might have seen things like synthetic division before. So you're wondering, why am I doing all this work? I know synthetic division. It's faster. At least there's less writing. Gets me to the same place. Um, I mean, maybe one downside with synthetic division is you're doing this stuff, you have no idea why, you just kind of do it and an answer pops out and you're happy. Um, but there's one big downside to synthetic division. It only works in this context where the thing that you're trying to divide by is like an x plus 2, right? There are going to be situations that come up um, when we're doing things like curve sketching where you might need to divide, for example, by a quadratic, maybe even an irreducible quadratic, right? Um, with long division, if this was an x squared plus 2 that I was dividing by, I can still do it. I can still say if that's x squared, what do I need to multiply it? We get x cubed. I need to multiply by x. I can go through the same process. I'll get a remainder, right? That's fine. But I can still do the long division. Synthetic division is completely useless in a situation like that. Um, so rather than having to learn two techniques where one applies in one very special case and the other one deals with all the other scenarios, just learn the one that works every time and you'll be better off. <clears throat>